Cheers! Welcome, Welcome to, to Movie Bitches! Yeah! <laughs> Thought our glasses were gonna break that I know, this is scary. RuPaul's Drag Race, Season 10, Episode 3! <laughs> First things first, shout out to our wine sponsor, Wink, trywink.com slash moviebitches. You get $20 off your first month of wine. Uh, secondly, thank you, thank you, thank you to our Patreon subscribers. Oh, that yes. really should be the first things first because you guys come first. <laughs> um, <laughs> but also, like, seriously, thank you. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, and then also, we, we, we thought these shirts were appropriate uh, for different reasons. These shirts, along with many others, are available at moviebitches.threadless.com. Oh, yes, our thrusted shirts are available oh, at threadless.com. Yes. Oh, my God. Thrusted. Thrusted. So, Calorie has left, yes. and she writes a very K filled note. Sure. Uh, the, the vixen was not happy. It's cute with a K. I mean, I'm not really here for it either. No, but like, she really was like not having it. Keep it cute. Cute with a K. And then um, we get uh, Monique sort of talking about how she doesn't yes. think she should have been safe and and the first week and in the bottom this week, and she's sort of like, what's going on? I feel yeah. like I'm not being judged properly. And I was like, I, hear I you, agree. Girl, I agree. And then the vixen is like, now, nah, girl, you just gotta step your pussy up. I'm like, no, I disagree. I think that she's being misjudged. <laughs> My whole look made out of hats, layered in cards, safe. And then I come out in a Cookie Monster costume. It wasn't no sponge, though. Oh my god. I was like, is she just like hiding these? Right? Are they just everywhere from when she was cutting them up? They keep showing up that. like a magic trick. It's <laughs> like, it wasn't a sponge, so you want a sponge? I got sponges. Yes. My brand, it's sponges. <gasps> like, it's like weird. <laughs> yeah. They must just be everywhere. I don't know. Or she just shot that that's what she stuffs her bra with. She's, she just sponges. keeps them. I'm gonna make this a thing. Sponges. Stupid. I don't know, but it made me laugh. Yeah. America's Next Drag Superstar is an old fashioned girl. <gasps> but. And then we get the mini challenge. Yeah. Which I thought was really fun, but I wish had been better. I was confused. I don't know why so many people were duds. Yeah, it well, was confusing. but Rue didn't seem to give them a lot. To, mm -hmm. Like some of it was we. It was like uh, it really okay. depended. On yeah, which, like so basically they have to be fresh off the bus right. drag. You know, yeah. the, the ingenue coming in from Ohio, yeah. and they're gonna make it in the big city or whatever. Welcome to the RuPaul Chocolate Bar casting call. Don't forget to make me laugh. But the joke is that it's like a seedy, disgusting. There's. It's just a word. Like a ladder. It's just a lone ladder with a piece of chocolate bar on it. I mean, I feel like the chocolate was a weird choice. Yes. To be selling, like, oh, are you auditioning for a commercial? Right. Like, maybe it should have just been, like, you're auditioning to be a model, and then, like, we go full fame, and it's, like, take off your top. No. That's a no. That That is a no. It's a no. But I But that's where it was leaning. It was leaning there. So, but then it was weird. Like, like they didn't want to go full casting couch. Right. There's just allusions to it. So I couldn't... Yeah, I mean, will you do whatever it takes to get this part? And it's like, well, this is a little weird. Especially right now, yes. Yes. Um, but yeah, so I was like, well, what, what's the joke here exactly? But I was like, with that lone ladder, I was like, where's Michael Fassbender in his overalls? Oh my god. Just painting that wall. Just painting the Behind wall. them, as they perform. <laughs> so I have to get into quick drag, and mm. they go into this green screen room with a ladder, and... I was like, okay, where's this going? Right, like what? And then all of a sudden we hear this the like- The voice of God, Rue. Rue, just going. I want you to do a monologue as the chocolate bar. Being the director, but right. it was uneven. Sometimes he gave the girls like good material to work with. Actual direction. It, or or like, it's like, okay, but can you dance? Yeah. Oh, I can dance. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So like Blair had stuff to work with and like whatever. And then it was like, okay, now bark like a dog. And then bark how much you like this chocolate. But that was... That I mean, was it was funny. funny. Like, the vixen <laughs> did something with it. <laughs> Tell me in barks how good the chocolate is. <laughs> That's silly. But sure. There were certain ones that, like... Like, I was expecting... So, Miss Cracker goes first, and I was like, Oh, good. She's funny. Yeah. And then it wasn't funny. No. Like, oh, that was a... So it was like a bummer. What yeah, it just weird, kind of fell know? apart there. Yeah, she looked good. I did like her look. Yep. I am the chocolate bar. 
I taste like your best afternoon, April 24th. And Mayhem just meows the whole time. I mean, that, so it was like, that's an easy thing to be funny at. Meow, Diva. Oh, yes, meow, Diva, yes, meow, meow. Meow. Congratulations, Diva. No, thank you. None for you, dear. No, I'll yes. take yours. Meow, 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 meow. And then I really did actually think Blair did the best. Yes. At the sort of like wide eye. I mean, that's her Well, this stick, was written but exactly. Like literally what, her, what she does or whatever. But this sort of wide eye. Oh, oh, can you dance? I used to dance for money back home. <laughs> you know, just like, oh. Can you show me a dance move? Um, yeah, sure, sure. Um. And you think it's going to be like a strip tease, and then she's right. like, tap, 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 time step, time step. And it's like, oh, that's hilarious. So I thought Blair actually did the best. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I kind of want um, James Mansfield and Blair St. Clair to do like Ooh. an old timey number. Uh huh. Some sort of vaudeville. Sure. Yeah, Gotta get a gimmick. And then for some reason, Monet decides that her thing is that she'll be fake Irish. I'm an Irish girl. Oh, what part of Ireland? Northern Ireland. I thought it was funny because it was weird. Sure. And like she was quick on her feet enough to be like, oh, okay. I mean, it was funny where it was like, can you dance an Irish jig? Oh, I'll show you. Yeah. Oh, it's an Irish jig, girl. You gotta jig it. Erin <laughs> Gobra. Erin Gobra. Erin Gobra. Erin Gobra. Okay, that's funny. It, I mean, so it was, okay, it was, I missed that. That was yeah. funny. <laughs> and then uh, Monique. Yeah does a similar-ish thing where they're like, oh, can you do, can an, you accent? do an accent? Well, she's, of course I can do a British, British accent. Top of the morning to you. <laughs> do you want something delicious? That it was succulent, decadent, hot and vivacious. Monique really like went for it yeah. and just sort of was like being very, very well, silly. Well, she seemed pretty quick on her feet too. She was very quick on her feet. You know, it was like, she was giving a lot of material. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like very obvious that Blair, Monet and Monique were gonna be in the top yes. for me. Yes. A lot of things were really obvious this episode where I'd be like, well, they edited this in a way that was very obvious. Yeah. It was weird because Cameron seemingly did a sort of like Oh, I'm a, a scared Russian girl lost in the city. See, so, so, so. Very good. And, and maybe I don't know where I am. And, and But it was like for such a nanosecond, but I thought it was funny and then they didn't show any more of it. So I was like, oh, no. was it funny? Or was it so bad you, that was on the show? That, that, I don't know, yeah. Lots of sad lost girls with accents. I mean, that's Hollywood. Pretty much. Maybe this was the wrong mini challenge. I, I'm i not sure that, you know, it was the right moment. I'm going to say it was not. No. We find out that Blair, Monet, and Monique are yep. going to be team leaders in the maxi challenge that is make your own Ad. commercial for a new dating app. And right. they're going to have different categories. Right. And one of them is end of days sure. for doomsday preppers. You know, the, the humor... And the writing in all of these was pretty bad. Yeah. And I was waiting for some more like wit and yeah. like concept. Uh-huh. I never got it. No. So end of days was one. Yeah. And the um, next one was Fibster. Fibster, which is uh, the app for pathological liars. And I was like, oh, this would be, that would be fun. Like that was sure. the first one that I thought, oh, that I have a lot of ideas for that. And that could be a lot of fun. And then the third one was Madam Butterface. Mm-hmm. They're big opera fans. <laughs> Ladies that have... Good bodies. Good bodies, but, but bad faces. Yeah. So I was... Why is it butterface? I always thought maybe they had, like, baby faces, because they're, like, pudgy. No, it's... it's, it's every, everything's good, <laughs> but her face. Oh. Butterface. It's not that the face is buttery. Buttery face. No. But okay. her face. Got it. And got it, the got it, gay it. version is a bagot. Because you put a bag over it. That's sadder. Somehow. A little bit. Somehow that's Because it sadder. combines a slur and... <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's like a bad slur already. And then also, you're, yeah, that's rough. You know, I didn't make it up. No. Rue is introducing the Maxi Challenge. And we both went, 
Why does Rue sound so oh, fucking yeah. weird? A commercial that makes me want to tap that app. And it was like all ADR, ADR. like so much. And then later, Rue's voice Very sounds, evidence Rue has Rue had a cold. a cold or something. Because later, the bad her, flu that was her going voice around. sounded really fun, like kind of odd. Yeah. Your runway looks slate, but in the challenge, you laid an egg. So we get Monique, who I thought, I, I mean, this is maybe my perception and the way it's edited and whatever, but I thought Monique was being a really good team leader. What if we call it out? Are you a pathological liar? Like Do you find it hard to find love as your true self? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's write those yeah. down. To me, Monique seemed very professional, mm -hmm. very produ she was producing it. Yep. She was like, okay, it's my task to produce this segment. Let's all work together. They they were like all brainstorming, brainstorming together. together. Mayhem was silent, but they were brainstorming together. So everyone's collaborating, throwing out ideas. Mayhem's a little quiet. And she said, well, like, what's going on? You know, like, do you want to, like, like, okay, you can be the narrator. What Great. do you want to do? You wanna like, do that. Do you have any ideas? Should we talk about it? You know, like she was really, I felt, trying to be open yeah. to discussing things. She wasn't like, no, your ideas are bad, Mayhem, or no, you can't do that, or whatever. She was like, hey, girl, do you want to switch? Right. Is that cool? Were you really, like, wanting to be that narrator? I could, that's fine with me. Stunning, okay. Great, stunning. Okay, yes. we're moving on. <laughs> No, I don't know. I thought Monique was being really fun about it all. She's just like, fabulous, stunning. Yep. I appreciate you. You know, she was like checking in with everyone. Like, okay, you getting painted? Yes. Thank you. Love you. Appreciate your kindness. I appreciate your kindness. You know, I thought she was being fun about it. Um, but maybe that's not how Mayhem felt. But some people don't like to be told what to do. You know what I mean? Even if they have no better ideas themselves. Exactly. Right. There were multiple opportunities for people to submit. If you didn't think that was a good plan for the sketch, then say, why don't we come up with a different reveal or a different thing? Because this doesn't make sense to me and I don't right. think it's going to read. Right. Mayhem, what's the reaction you want from him? I get the psych gag is, this is different than mm -hmm. this. Yes. Um. I'm going to have to go ahead and, and pull out this. This glittery blue-eyed, gorgeous, smiling. gorgeous bullshit paddle. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about it more. We'll talk about it more. I just thought I'm gonna keep this here for. Untouched. I love it. I love it. This, yeah, this was like, we'll we'll get there. And then we get this whole fake nose drama. Where'd you get those noses, um, Asia? Right there on the table. I want one too. I don't know if there's any more. You call it's like, oh, can I have a oh, nose yeah. too? They're like. No, there aren't any more because they're all on Aquarius' face. First of all, no one should have used a Pinocchio nose. Well, unless they were on the Fibster app. Oh, sure. Like, that would have been a silly gag that you could have done, like, oops. Yeah, like, right? Oh, no, I'm not. Like, if Cameron had been doing the whole voiceover, the whole narration yeah. with the Pinocchio nose. Or if she starts off, she starts off, just looks regular. Yeah. And then by the end, we cut back to her and it's just like out here. Cause people with, oh no. I, I thought that could have been a fun side get too if, she, if someone was staring right down the barrel right. of the camera so it, you can't quite tell that they're wearing a Pinocchio nose if they really like worked it out. Put some contouring on it. Yeah, put some contouring on it and then just be like, and I've never, you know, whatever, yeah. make some sort of joke and then just go, oh, you know, that would have been really funny. Yeah, that would have been funny. I don't know. So first up, we get the filming of the Fibster mm. app commercial, and Cameron starts. Introducing Fibster, the new app for pathological liars looking for love. She was really stiff. You know, I don't know what Mayhem would have done with it if they had not switched and whatever. I don't whatever. know, yeah, because it wasn't very funny. No. It was weird, I feel like all of them took the like, really sell us on this app right. idea too seriously. It was like, no, we don't need we don't need all this information about the app. Just be funny. Anybody who is worried about the end of days has end of days. The same thing as Christian Tingle. It's just a new dating app for doomsday preppers. Well, like, you know, you could do a funny thing. I'm like thinking about Kim Chi's thing where she did like no fat fat, fat and Asians, Asian. yeah. Like you could do like a fun thing off that of like, are you fat feminine Asian? Well now there's an app for you, right. Fixer. You know, yeah. where like that's kind of dark and twisted, but right, I, again, right. I don't necessarily mind that. No. Like you're taking a thing and making fun of how fucked it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm I could be down with that if it was done well. And then Monique comes out and she's directing herself. This was yes. so great. She's like, okay, three, two, one, and, and action. Action. 
<laughs> She's self-directing it. I'm looking for a beautiful, strong, st let's do that part again. Okay. Action. <laughs> I'm looking for man who likes house guests and house visitors. What's the difference? But then we found out what the difference Sinbad? was. Sinbad? What? Because he's a house guest. Oh. And then we get to Mayhem's part, and they're basically like, she's supposed to like reveal right. herself. I was confused. Confused by this um, whole time. She's supposed to reveal herself, and Michelle and Carson are like, we don't understand what's going on. Right. Would you explain it? And Mayhem is like, um, what comes after this? Then he's supposed to be into it. He's supposed to go along with it. It's what we talked about, remember? Monique is definitely a micromanager. And why didn't you say something earlier before you went into film and like, be like, you guys, I don't, know. I don't really understand how this is gonna work or make sense. You know, if they're dismissive of you, then that's on them. Yeah, exactly. But it didn't seemingly well, happen. Think, so she's got, she's supposed to be like a dominatrix, I guess, is the joke, and she's got this big leather jacket on. Should, should, should I take off my jacket? Maybe. What you got underneath? That's yeah. better, yeah. Stunning. Yes! You should take off your jacket! This fabulous, like, leather... Yes! Yes! Take off that leather jacket! This was a mess. It was a mess. Well, it was just so confusing. Um, well, I mean, I'll say it now. I paused the episode multiple times and asked Andrew, I, what's going on? I, I don't... Not even just in this commercial. In the final... In every single one of the commercials, I said, now what does that mean? I don't understand what's happened. <laughs> True story. <laughs> so then end of days. Yeah. This was a bad commercial. Just like on a like a commercial level, right? Where it was like, oh, we're gonna, I forgot this was a commercial. We're gonna tell you this long story about how I'm you know, it was like I have her discovering the app and whatever, and I just didn't they were all dressed like business women instead I was confused. of like doomsday preppers. Right. You know, they should have been in like fatigues or like Something with cans right. behind them. Lots and lots of cans. Something. This seemed so bizarre that they were all dressed like just like in sexy business wear. I was like, why are they selling the app? Are they the? Do they run the? Like, do Eureka and Miss Cracker run the right. app? Like, I didn't understand what was happening. Right. Who were they? They were just her friends who were also Doomsday for. I didn't know. Don't be such a drama queen. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was funny that Eureka actually slapped her in the face. I mean, that was the only funny. But then they cut that, part. and it was actually only funny. But it was also only funny because Eureka actually slapped her in the face. Right. So then we cut to the end scene, and and the new pit crew guy is proposing yeah. to Blair. And, oh, I'm so excited, or whatever. And I did love the funniest part to me, which they didn't get played up at all, was Eureka just keeps going, oh, 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 o
Yeah, it looked like he was flexing and he had a visible pad line. It was weird. It looked like a diaper. It looked bad. Bring back Andrew Christian. Yes, except those are stupid too. Those are very stupid. Remember the like netting one? Oh yeah. On your tush? That doesn't look good on anybody. No. Who Not wants even that? Charlie Theron. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. Nor could Michael Fassbender. No. <laughs> it looks stupid. No. Mm -mm. So then we get to the Madame Butterface yep. uh, filming, and I was confused yeah. uh, once again. So <laughs> we look down the line, and I'm like, wait, but Monet has a pretty face. Yep. And a weird, it looks like she shoved blocks yeah. in her cat Padding? suit, which yeah. I found to be confusing. Very they were, confusing. It wasn't even like, oh, I'm going to do some like cellulite. Something that like looks real. Yeah, no. Or, like that a real body. Exactly. Would have. It was just like, oh, I shoved like wooden blocks in my bodysuit. And then she's talking. She's at a movie theater. There's a whole something about, oh, are you tired of girls basically like me? I suppose where my face looks great, but then uh, my body's gross. This was so weird. How did they come up with this concept? I don't know. There was so many easy opportunities to be like, to have the pit crew be like. Damn, girl, look at that ass. And then them turn around and be like, ah, or whatever. Exactly. And be like, has this ever happened to you? <laughs> well, look out, because right. we've got this new app that's just, you know, or whatever. And Are you look looking for some quick action? And then wouldn't it have been funny if all of the, like, Tinder swiping things was, like, just bo body exactly. down or whatever? That's what Grindr is anyway. It's all just chess. So been it's funny. like, that's what you do. It's like, right, ooh, bikini shot. That and or... It's like, are you looking, you know, for something quick? Like, if you order now, yeah. then, like, each, the, the app comes with a free pillow. Yeah. To cover her face? Oh. This one was sad for me, because I kept being like, what's the angle? Who, who's like, well, yeah, it what <laughs> person is exclusively like, uh, I like people that have, I don't know, Zero de Bergerac noses. Um, I think the idea like sexy was sexy bodies. I think the idea was that they have sexy bodies and you don't care about the face, right? Because you're just trying to get it on, right? But so that it was not been the like, ad. I'm here for a quick one. Yeah. Are you lonely? Do you want to get it in real quick? Try Butterface. <laughs> yeah, that should have been five feet away. <laughs> yeah. You know, like whatever. Like, like be like, oh, five feet away, damn girl, looking around at all like the hot butts or whatever, exactly. and then just being like, Burr. something with a paper bag. I don't know. There's. They could have done a paper bag, drawn a, a drawn a real pretty face with, on a paper bag with the eyelashes, you know, and just be like. <laughs> Stupid Fandango commercial. <laughs> Something. This anyway, was not. No, I didn't understand this at all. No. But we get Asia's uh, hilarious face. I mean, it was funny. It made me laugh, but then it was like, okay. That was it. She made a funny face once. She should win this whole challenge. Confused. And then Yu Hua on this exercise ball. Oh boy. This didn't make any sense to me. I mean, I, mean, she I guess she should have she was... gotten fake legs, put them behind her head, and been like, I can stretch all the way around. Don't mind my face. Exactly. You know, whatever. So then we get back to the workroom, and Blair is talking about how she's really, really close with her mom, and she talks uh -huh. to her all the time, mm. and oh, she's just my best friend, wow. and I haven't. I haven't talked to her in so long, and oh, it's so nice just to catch up at the end of the day. Mm. And like, oh, I had a really hard day, mom, mm -hmm. and like everything. But it's just really hard. Yeah. <laughs> It's actually been really hard being here without my mom. Yeah. Hearing her every day or talking to her, or like, wow. that's been like all bottled up this whole time here, and it's been like. Yeah. I, I... So then we get the big drama of the episode with. I mean, whatever. whatever. I didn't mind it. At least they were both being open about it. Like, straight. Sure. Like, they were yes. being very straightforward about what yes. was going on. So. Yes. Yes. Can we yes. talk about yes. how your best drag is someone else's wig, though? That's confusing. <laughs> I'm saying the hair was borrowed. I had another wig that matched the dress as well. Okay, I'm just saying that. So what do you say? Aquaria is basically like calling out the vixen being like, you borrowed Monique's wig last week for your best, best drag. drag look. The best drag wasn't even your drag. 
And she's like coming for her and she's just jealous because she won. Yep. America let the facts be the facts. Vixen handed Aquaria her ass in a gift bag. Gift wrapped, there you go, Merry Christmas. Don't poke the bear, man. Don't do it unless you're willing to fight back. Yes. I mean, it was like, Well, ah! I, I think the biggest thing for me is that this was stupid because yeah. she had a bad read. Oh, yeah, like, be Don't funny come for her. her if it's not a good read. Yeah, or if it's not funny exactly. or like interesting or whatever. Exactly, because now she's just going to be antagonized and come back at you and be like, right. well, fuck you. And then she did and was like, this is meaningless, you're stupid, this is dumb. She came for her drag. Right, which is personal. It's not it's personal. personal. <laughs> and then, I mean, then the fight gets interrupted by that spider. So let's talk about... <laughs> What? Oh my god, that stupid spider. That was a creepy spider. They were all losing their oh my god. damn mind. Mayhem climbing over this table. No! And then I stupid. love that Cameron was just like... Okay, I'll put it in a cup and get rid of it. Just like, oh, she, it was like the top of a hairspray can. And yeah. a piece of paper. Just like, okay, this is... And then I love okay. someone, oh my god, Cameron, you're such a big man. Did someone say that? Yes! A dinosaur, did you see oh, Cameron, it? You a big it strong man. Of course. The thirst got realer. Real again, yeah. whatever. It's funny, I like, I think I like Cameron. Yeah, I think so. Like, I feel like she needs to really break out. Yeah. Because I'll see glimmers and moments yeah. of like, oh, oh, you're Ooh. really gonna be fun. Oh, oh, you kind of pulled back a little yeah. or whatever. I'm excited. I hope she grows. Well, and then, oh my gosh, so we were talking, so Blair's husband been talking about her mom right. and how she's like her biggest fan yeah. and her biggest supporter and all these things, but she grew up in like a really Christian family. And then Dusty starts talking about how like, oh, it's really nice to hear that because she grew up in a very religious family and they tried to scare her straight and they tried to exercise her from the gay demon that was living with Ella. I was like, oh my God, this was so sad. It really was. And horrifying. Yeah. They got me exercise because they thought I was possessed really? by a gay demon. And I uh, stopped him and I went upstairs and I packed my car. I said, I can't do this anymore. And I'm so glad that she was like, fuck you guys. Right, I'm out of here. Fuck all y'all. Like, uh, hopefully they can mend and her parents can grow and all mm -hmm. of that. But I'm glad that she was like, bye, this is nonsense. Yeah. I will go be happy <laughs> without you until you decide that you want to be in my life. It sounds like she made the healthy choice. She made the healthy choice. Well, that was really nice to see. I mean, and now she has a hot fiance. fiance. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very happy with my fiance. <laughs> I was like, yes. yes. <laughs> you made the right choices. <laughs> oh, no, this was really sad, but also like, happy. It was like, it was like a good, yeah. like, it, it ended well. And, exactly. And this is like the poster sure, for the It Gets Better project. Right? And I'm sure it was like interesting and, and positive for people who are maybe in that situation now to hear it yeah. and go, Oh, I can take myself out of this like horribly oppressive situation. Yeah. Great, yeah. you know. And so that was like a good message. And I was like, oh, I'm liking Dusty too. I'm like, I am too. I'm really liking everybody. Yes, I agree. I, I'm excited. I agree. I like this cast a lot. Yeah. So then Monet is talking about how she goes. She goes to church, church. every Sunday. I am the section leader of a Methodist church, girl. I go to choir rehearsal on Wednesdays in full drag. I was like, yes. yes. That's I want to really go to that kind of church. This sister act. It's just sister act. It's sister act three. Exactly. <laughs> so maybe it was Monet and not Monique. Who knew? We could all gonna go to my church in full drag. Yeah. And they would live for it. I might have to meet y'all at brunch afterwards. Probably have my mother marry mimosa. A mother marry mimosa joke? Yeah. Something? And I was like, I don't. Okay. And again, read the room. Well, sure, but be like, it just wasn't a funny joke. It's not funny. And so then the vixen was like, "Well, that's not funny." Girl, can y'all stop being so negative all the time? Jeez. What'd you call me? Negative. Just like, oh my god, you're so negative. Negative. Which is sort of fair. Well, she's just gonna come for everything she says now. Vixen, of course. The vixen's gonna come for everything. Everything she says. She says. Now. So it's like, you you poked the bear. Right. I mean, that may be unfair, but right. that's but what you, happens. Exactly. She has been. Like I said, very upfront. Yeah. What her so it's like are. the thing to do here is just not say anything. Yeah. So quick commercial break, and then we'll be back with commercials, <laughs> and the runway, and a lip sync, and untuck. There's like still a lot to come. Mm. There's a lot. There's a lot to come. <laughs> Rue comes down the runway, and at first I was like, meh, meh. and then. <laughs> And then after like a little bit, I was kind of like, okay, this is like fairy godmother, but like in the 
Disney Channel original version, like not yeah. ABC. Yeah. She's yeah. not like in it with Whitney and Brandy. She's like I, one tier lower. I too was like, oh. Oh, it's like this liquid, yeah. silver, mirrored fabric. It fit perfectly. The, it was like very well tailored. And then I liked the complementary tool color of this gray yeah. with the silver. Like, it won me over. Not my favorite of all time, no. but it went from oh to oh. oh. No, I, I like okay. it. I like it. Uh, the guest judges, no Ross, but still a lot of Carson. <laughs> um, and then. Oh boy. So who's he? It's Nico. Nico. Something. Nico something. He's the hot guy from Younger, which you should watch. Sure. I think you'd like it. Sure. It's a cute show. Yeah. Sutton Foster is is adorably charismatic. What can I say? And 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 uh, Hilary Duff is in it too. That's fun. Oh, I was like, this isn't Hilary Duff. It was a comatose Courtney Love. Oh, oh right. No. So then yeah, the other guest judge is, is Courtney Love with a brand new face. <laughs> Oh boy, this was fun. She was so, um, on some, um, medication? Yeah. Yeah. You're obviously some sort of seasoned actor. It's not an app maybe I'd use, but I think about it. If it was, you know, Armageddon, which may be coming. And she kept, she was doing that Ariana Grande thing. Which is Can you see her? <laughs> Your eyes are closed. <laughs> Today is Tuesday, I think, and maybe that might be the color of pink. It was like weird. So, category, category is, is feathers. Have you heard the uh, Ava Gabor story about feathers? Maybe not. Oh my god, it's really good. So, apparently, she was like a big like animal, we're like, yay, animals! But then, feathers apparently don't. Well, no, was on set in this gorgeous like feathered gown. Mm. And her friend, he was like, Ava, like, you look great, but you can't wear this. She's like, but it's so chic. And he's like, yes, but then everyone is going to want one and all of these birds are going to get killed. Yeah. And she goes, darling, feathers don't come from birds. And she goes, well, where do they come from? Pillows, darling, pillows. sisters are out of touch. <laughs> pillows. Pillows, pillows, darling, pillows. So, first down the runway is Miss Blair St. Clair. Yes, and at first I was like, yes, and then I was like, mm. Yeah, I mean, like, the initial just like, yep. oh, you're in this, like, white dress with this nice hair. I thought her head looked cute. It was a little matronly, the wig. Once again, I felt like the dress didn't quite fit properly. Mm -hmm. It looked a little like it was going to fall off. She didn't have anything up here. Yeah. And she didn't really pat her hips. I mean, if the dress was just fitted to her body, it right. wouldn't really be a problem. And the more that I looked at it, it just started to look more and more like she was tarred and feathered. We've now, like, covered you in honey and roll around. I don't... It was, it was like Parent Trap. Yes! <laughs> It looked messy. It a didn't little bit. look like purposefully, no. you know, like beautifully, like, oh, and these feathers. Yeah. It looked like, what happened? A little bit. I also didn't love the length. For a second, I was like thinking, what if it was shorter, more like flapper-y? Maybe. Could have worked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was... A T, maybe a T length? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Mm. This was fine. It, it swallowed her up a bit. It was, it was like, okay. Yeah. For me. So then next is Miss Brianna Cracker. <laughs> Yep. It's just, um, and this uh, was uh, not great. I liked her shoes. I thought her shoes looked great. I liked I was parts like, of I this. I was like half in, half out. I was like, oh, this navy blue is very nice. The I thought the actual dress looked really nice. And then it was like, why'd you put that? Why'd you crap cage it up with that with weird the golden, golden cage, cage and the golden didn't, feathers? Didn't and... add any, for me, value to it. No. And then that with. The like nest. Robin's nest fascinator was too much. Just yes, the eggs, that's a cheeky wink. Yeah. Oh look, you've got a little nest on your head, that's adorable. Right. But yeah, I didn't care for the cage. No. Like, I don't know why the cage bird sings, darling. <laughs> darling. <laughs> Miss Maya Angelou. It was it was a bit all over the place yeah. for me. I didn't think it was bad, but I was like, no, yes, no, yes, no. no. It was a you know, it was yeah, yes, no, 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 no. yes. But wasn't that fabulous though? Yes. 
No, 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 yeah. My tits have fallen off. You don't know what I'm talking about. Nope. Great. I'll play the clip. My tits are falling off! Eureka comes down the runway in this evil queen, you know, the queen of the crows, you know, yes. sort of thing with this big cape. Yep. I actually thought this was pretty cool. I thought it was too. I thought it, it worked well. I, I liked her makeup. It yeah. It was very, you know, like, oh, yeah, what's ooh, going on here? She did have, you know, a canty bottle on top of her head, which yep. she tends to like to do. Yeah, it's she really... Big, big loaf. She, yep. I did think, it looked like she was going to, you know, like, swirl and like, poof, into a thousand crows. Like, it sure. Like she was, yes. And, and then... I'm telling my spell and... Yeah. 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 That's what it looked like. Yeah. And then it was just like, crows. <gasps> yes. I liked this. I liked this, too. I, this was... At this point, I was like, this is the best one. Mm -hmm. It was soon superseded, but that's fine. Yes. So the next was the Vixen mm -hmm. in this peacock realness look. Yes. I liked this a lot. I did not like the wig. Well, the wig was just kind of basic. Yeah. And it cheapened the look. A hundred percent. I think, oh, if she had had like a bald cap and then just a big feather coming out the top of her head. Okay. That would have been more interesting. That would have been more interesting. I thought the top and the bottom of the dress were disjointed. The top was so sort of fabulously glittery, glittering and jeweled, and then the bottom was like regular Peacock feathers. feathers. And, and the, the transition between them wasn't quite working Sure. I thought the story behind it was really cool. She talks about how she used to work at a zoo, apparently, yeah. and how she loved that the male peacock was always the most beautiful. And yeah. I was like, oh, that's a really fun story. And like it endeared, she like drew me it's in. It's very drag -y, And like right? endeared me to this idea of it. I was like, oh, I like that. And then I was like, you know, into it. So right. I, I like this a lot. Yeah. So the next on the runway was Monique Hart. Looking gorgeous. Gorgeous. Her face was just Flawless. She was just like this Greek goddess, angel, white and gold. Yeah. Like mean, a Zeusian dove, like mm, some, I don't know, I was like, yes, bitch. And then also she makes like a Snow White and the Huntsman reference. Did she? Yeah. If the Huntsman had a good sister, I would have been that sister. Yes, I could definitely see you with Charlie's Throne and like seven, like mm -hmm. good versus mm -hmm. evil, whatever. I really thought this was gorgeous. I did too. Mm -hmm. I didn't love the skirt. For me, the skirt felt kind of like nightgown-y. Mm, so I loved her hair was huge with these braids and the gold and the yes. wi golden wings. Yeah. I thought this looked really good. I thought it looked good too. I liked it. Yep. Next was Mayhem Miller. And she came out and I was like, yes, I like this. I didn't love the colors. Sure, the hot pink. I think... Hot pink's never gonna be my favorite color. I thought this looked really good. Mm -hmm. Her face, of course, looked gorgeous. Yes. You know, it had a bit of a feathered vagina thing going a on. A little bit, a little bit. Which, you know, is fine. I uh, wasn't floored, but I was like, this is good. Yeah, and she looked really pretty. Yes. Everyone looked really pretty. Their faces all looked great. Well, well. that's not true. <laughs> but, um, she, you know, she looked really pretty. Mayhem looked really pretty. Uh, unlike, so, uh, yeah, uh, so next, I almost said Dusty Ray Springfield. <laughs> Next was Dusty Ray Springfield. Oh my. Coming out on stage. Ooh, love me some Dusty Springfield. <laughs> yeah. You know who Dusty Springfield is? The singer. The singer Dusty Springfield, you know who she is. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I was about to say, yeah, I know who he is, so obviously I don't. <laughs> ah, shut up. I love him. I love him. <laughs> Just wishing and, and hoping, hoping and, and thinking. And oh, really? Praying. Planet. Yeah, that's just oh, okay. and hoping and thinking and praying. So next up was Dusty Ray Bottoms as Poison Ivy Stripper. And this was so much. This was so much. I did not like this at all. Talk about tickety tack tacking up your outfit with right. every single piece of crap that you brought. <laughs> it was so much. No. I can't even, like I couldn't even like take in what was no. happening. No, It was just so, the, I mean. The, to process everything that was going on. It was the, coming at me. The face alone. The face alone was an ombre red wig yep. with white feathered, feathered. eyelashes yep. and blue. blue. To go, goes great with red and green. It was so many colors with yeah. blue lipstick Lips. and then the like pink fuchsia shading yeah. under her chin. Yeah, so much. And then those awful earrings. It was so much. I was like, what? Ah! You went from last week just like yeah. real classy and, 
and bare bones center of what your look is all about and don't you look fabulous and then it was just like oh she didn't do dots though no this came out of nowhere for me me too i was, was like, like what was dusty what happened right? what was this i don't know so the next was cameron michaels who really surprised oh. me this week i Loved this. Yeah, this was really cool. She comes out in Charlize Theron's outfit from Snow White and the Huntsman. But like also combined with a flying monkey. Yeah, and like Maleficent. Yes. These horns. But then also just a little bit of Princess Banana Pants. That's not a thing. What was it? Princess Banana Lady. Banana Lady. even worse. <laughs> At least if she had been Princess Banana Pants, it would have been silly. Cuckoo Banana Pants. No. Princess Banana Lady. But the, cause like the, the like weird monkey face hair. Oh my god. Oh, but much much better. But much no, much better. I mean, I was like, yes, Cameron has never looked better. No, and this was so this. cool was and so edgy ornate, and like, yeah, so well made and just. And then later she takes oh, off the yes. skirt part when they're dancing at the end, and I was like, oh, this is almost even better. Uh -huh. Like it's Grace Jones, yeah. just like fashion. Uh huh. <gasps> I thought this was fabulous. I agree. Next was Monet Exchange. This was disappointing. I think it was particularly disappointing because she came right after Cameron. Sure. Because we were like, yeah! yeah. Oh, Aww. that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think that it fit particularly well. It was not the most flattering of silhouettes. No. I didn't understand why it needed to be like a crop top two piece. Right. You know? Well, then the problem with that was that it was, she wasn't like cinched and didn't give cinched. her shape. Right. It seemed disjointed. I was yeah. like, okay, it's sort of flappery, you've got the finger waves right. and the feathers, but it's not really the silhouette of a flapper. No. Uh, well, and then it was just like another red with a short blonde wig like yeah. last week, and yeah. I'm like, well, let's maybe do something different. I just, I didn't love this look. No, it was a little underwhelming. Yeah. So the next was Asia O'Hara. Oh my god. This was, was everything. This Tweety Bird caftan. Yes. I was just like, Yes! I was so excited! Oh my god, this was everything. I loved, loved this. It was the stupidest thing I've ever seen, and I loved every second of yes, it. Yes, but then like, as they pointed out in Judging Later too, like all of the little details mm -hmm. where she would up her hair so that you could see her makeup and whatever, and then the, the gloves that made the beak, and it was very elevated, smart, uh -huh. cheeky, fun. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Loved it. So the next was Yuhua. Yeah. In another evil queen, raven, yep. black. This was perfectly fine. It was like, she. I liked the silhouette. You know, she had like yeah. a nice look and whatever. But it was like, this to me wasn't as elevated as some of the others had done. No. It's we were like, certainly, it was like certainly the worst of the raven, evil queen looks. Right. So it was just like, um, not amazing. No. And it was like the third one, which didn't help. Right. So then last was Aquaria, who I felt like milk was on stage. Well, it looked like she was so painted so white, so yep. pale. Well, and then like with like a, a gimmicky thing, right? Like she has like the arrows and the blood and she's like a bleeding bird that was sh I, shot down. I mean, I didn't mind this. I didn't mind it. I thought she looked, you know, like a Victoria's Secret angel that was like shot, you know, like, what? Ah! But like in a tragic, like, oh, my love, Romeo. You know, sure. it gave me sort of a story. It was telling me a tale. Yes. And I think something was underwhelming about it. I and agree. maybe it was because it was so one palette. Maybe. I thought the makeup was really cool looking. Mm -hmm. The wig with the white, with the pale, maybe washed it out a bit. I couldn't quite figure out why it didn't just BAM! That was Fucking cool. It was yeah. just like, oh, that was, oh that's I cool. like that that's a lot. That was yeah. really cool. Yeah. You know? I, don't I know. agree. So, commercial break, and then we'll be back with judging and uh, lip sync and untucked. Girl. So, then the commercials. Uh, the first was End of Days. Yeah. And this was like just kind of okay for me. I didn't laugh. No, not really. I was still confused by like the premise, you know, the vixen was pretty bad and her like, the end is coming, the end is not, like, Somehow you know. I kept, when Blair came in and was like, oh my god, you guys, the world is ending, the world is ending. I was like imagining some sort of Chicken Little scenario. Ladies, haven't you heard? The end of the world is coming. The sky is falling, the sky is 
falling you guys yeah we know sure <laughs> sure i'm not saying that would have been better i just came came to mind and what's the pitch i still don't really know the pitch was that you can find someone to spend the rest of the end of the world with i guess i guess i don't maybe it's that this wasn't the best idea for an amp maybe but how can i get my end of days all you gotta Ooh. do is download the app. Mm -hmm. I didn't think Eureka was particularly funny. No. And her like, she didn't seem like she was searching the grocery store for, like no, it was it a weird- No, like she was awkwardly waiting for whoever, him whichever pick, pick her, her guy ran in late. Yeah. It seemed like the timing was off. It was weird. I didn't, I, I thought this was pretty bad. I thought this was like, eh? It, you know, it wasn't like, oh God, that was a mess. <laughs> But it was just like, well, that wasn't It was funny. just above a mess. Yeah, it was like, they all were professional. Everyone seemed to know their lines. Sure. Everyone was like, sure. doing fine. It just wasn't that funny. No. So the next up was Fibster. Yep. And already I was like, oh, I know what this concept is. Like, they, for sure. me, had the best concept to begin with. But yes. then they utilized it well, too, with, like, the narrator coming on and saying, like, this is... Welcome to Fibster, where yeah. you, it's, like, for pathological liars. Yeah, so at least it set it up better. Sure. You know, like it introduced me to the app, right? Yes. Away. I was like, God, this one was the most commercial. Are you a pathological liar? Is truth serum not your cup of tea? Is it hard to show people the real you? Like the most, the most like, like a, a commercial. commercial. So yes. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm understanding what's happening. Right. Uh, Cameron was still pretty stiff. I still laughed at Monique with that teeny tiny little. Oh, wait. <laughs> I, this had my favorite moment. I thought that Dusty was. Great. I thought Dusty was really funny. I thought Dusty I need a man who can handle all my personalities. It's hard to find true love when you have Samantha, Becky, and Tamp <laughs> living inside you. Becky. You're like, whatever, it's silly. It was silly and fun. Like the, the gag, the sight gag of cutting away to her in a straight jacket is very easy. Well, also, this had the best. This was absolutely not the Queens doing it all. This was someone Not necessarily. Who was I don't know, but, probably but this was, I think this was someone in the editing room that is funny as fuck yes. because they had the, all of the fake profiles. fake profiles with these fake pictures. And if you pause it, it's fucking hilarious. Under the each pro tiles. I like lots of things. Chai tea and Tai Chi. Chi. Stupid. Do you like toast? <laughs> I'm totally not a stock photo. Which is so funny because I was like, well, I love the videos have the stock photo. And then it says, I'm totally not a stock photo. And, and I was like, yeah. I can't I'm so into salads right now. Ah. In front of my salad? In front of my salad. Uh, are you serious? That's not what it looks right like. Right in front of my salad? That's not what it looks like. You guys are fucking gross. So like, uh, that was like I mean, if someone on their fun. team came up with that, then they definitely got short chains. Oh, yes, because it was so funny. So and funny. such a throwaway. Yes. Oh, this was cr the salad. The salad thing really got me. But also, I liked that at least, I mean, this was the only one that had profiles. Yeah, like visual design yeah. for the app or yeah. whatever. Yeah, which I thought was helpful. And then Monique is pretending to be a very rich and wealthy right. woman, but then actually she's living in like a roach motel. Yeah. Hi, my name's Tanisha, spelled just like it sounds. I live in Beverly Hills in a six-bedroom mansion. I'm looking for a man... <laughs> And I thought this could have been funnier. I agree, but it, was but it wasn't funny. bad. Yeah, you know. But I thought it could have been even funnier. Yeah, I agree. And then I mean, was, this one like started the strongest, and then like fell off a cliff. Fell off a cliff, because then I'm totally a California girl, tall blonde with an awesome tan. It cuts to Cameron on her laptop. And this was so funny. Andrew pointed out that they had a table with a tablecloth, table cloth, but then the backdrop they used was a restaurant with tables that didn't have tablecloths. Odd choice, but whatever, you know. <laughs> it made me laugh. Yeah. Um, it's a camera, like, just like typing on her laptop, being like, I'm blonde and I'm from Southern California and da 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 and all these things. And I kept being like, uh huh, uh huh. What's the joke? Is she gonna, is she gonna stand up and she has like a mermaid tail? Like, I was like, <laughs> right. like, I genuinely yeah. was like, great, so what's, what's underneath what's, this table? What's happening then? No, we're not answering? You know, like, I, I feel like it could have been a pretty easy joke to have her be like, so muscly. Sure. You know, yeah. or something. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, oh, I'm. Oh, dainty, 5'2, and, yeah. you know, whatever. And then it's like, nope, it's a man. Athletic. It's like a. Athletic yeah. build, you know, like, or whatever. You know, something. <laughs> yeah. Not model thin, but, you know, something. <laughs> sure. And then it just ended, and I was like, 
I paused once again. I paused. I said, Andrew, I don't understand what was wrong. What was she was just acting normal, Andrew? What happened? Well, and then this was so also really confusing to me because she was the spokesperson. She was the narrator, and then all of her other lines were in VO. Right. So I was like, is she still the same person? It was confusing. I don't know. I guess she wasn't. Or was she? I... Question mark. So then we cut to Mayhem in the awkward restaurant scene, revealing that she is a dominatrix and like, hey, let's go. And oh, once again, I paused and I said, Andrew, I don't understand what just happened. And I, I had to explain that. Yeah. Apparently, Mayhem was Cameron. Cameron was who Mayhem had said that she was right. online, yep. but she was actually a dominatrix. I, honestly, I don't think I ever would have gotten there without you. <laughs> I, I was so baffled. And it's just such a bummer because if it had, if they had gotten like, this, just it, figured they, it out, they could have won. So the next was Madame Butterface. Yes. And this was bad. Ever been at a three dollar matinee with that special girl? A romantic scene comes up and you want something sexy to grab onto. Just one problem. Feels like a bag of bricks. I thought this was bad in a different way from the end of days one. Yeah. Where the end of days one was sort of blah. Right. This one had more going on, but it was like the same bad joke. Yeah. Oh, are you sick of being in the movie theater and grabbing onto bricky bodies? Bricky, a bricky body. I did I didn't know what they were trying to tell me. No, not and, at all. But it, and then Asia behind her, everyone thinks this that her face is just the funniest thing that ever fucking happened. I didn't think it was not funny. But no, I, I thought it was like, funny, but not... then it's like, well, that's not a thing. That doesn't make the skit work. Everyone knows that during the summertime, a banging body is way more important than a cute face. I didn't think was like outstandingly funny, no. particularly. Aquaria was at that nightclub and she was pretty bad. Oh, really bad. Thanks to Madame Butterface, I found a hot guy who could take all this body without worrying about this busted face. This looked so crazy, but not funny crazy. No. Just like, what? It was like, it, 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 reminded me, it reminded me of Milk yet again, where it's like how oftentimes Milk will do too much. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's like, no, no. You've done, oh, you've done too, too much. much. <laughs> they missed the whole point. Yeah. I feel like the point of like the Butterface app is that it's so you can fuck someone that you don't care what they look like, you just want a good body to fuck. Right. Like that's, that's the point about, exactly. that's why, exactly. that is a exactly. Butterface, that's the whole fucking point. Right. And if, if the app isn't about that, then I don't know what the point of yeah, the app is. Yeah, it did is. seem like all of them took it as, are you looking for love? Right. Which is not the point of most of the most dating apps, and right. it's not the point of particularly these dating apps. Exactly. Right? The world's ending. You need to find someone now? Yeah. Here's this app. Here's everyone in your vicinity. Exactly. Cool. Are you not good enough to get anyone? Well, now you can lie on this app. Cool. Are you horribly ugly, but you have a good body? Here's an app. I don't get it. Yeah, you're right. We cracked it. They all yeah. went for the love. They went for like this yeah. This isn't eHarmony. No, this is, that was not what this we were going for. This is not Match.com. This is Grinder. Grinder. Yes. Swipe. No, thank you, ma'am. Yes. Yes. No. 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 Wait a minute. No. With the Fipster one, they could have been like, we can make, we'll make it real easy for you to lie. We've got fake certificates of exactly. like, oh, I graduated from law school. Like, like make it <laughs> funny. Like, yeah. make it like, oh, we, or, we've planned it out so it's easy for you to lie. Exactly. Like, that's the Here's joke. like a rant, like, you know, like we have to pick out and tell like all of your stats yeah, yeah. and stuff. And it just does it automatically. It doesn't got, matter. We've got hot stock photos that yeah. you could use all you want. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So the top three are Blair, Eureka, and Asia. And I was like, Ale? I got Asia. Yep. Because her runway was fab and she was the funniest part of that video? Yeah. She was, she was the funniest part of that video. Yeah, and her runway was fabulous. Uh, Eureka, I was like, what, what? why? I don't know why. I don't know why. And Blair, I was like, I guess, cause you were the team captain and you like did some acting? and your runway was not very good. I was confused. I was confused. I don't, and I then kind again, of was like, I'm not necessarily sure who else 
I would put up there. Well, so I, I would put dusty, except her runway was gone off. Exactly. You know? like for me, it would probably be Monique, Asia, and Blair. I guess. Because she kind of held it all together. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't find Eureka to be funny. And they were just going gaga over her. They were but like, they oh, this is the Eureka we've been waiting for. You're back on top, girl. And I was like, I don't need this narrative. I don't need this storyline of like, oh, you were in the bottom last week, but now you're on top again. But she wasn't. I don't care. Exactly, well, she I, wasn't. I'm trying to remember, I don't particularly think they were laughing during her parts of the, of the commercial. Stealing food from the grocery store alone. Now I've got a partner in crime. I love end of days because there's just never enough. So then, during the judging, Mayhem throws Monique under the bus and is like, oh, she just didn't listen and she just told everyone what to do and it was her way or the highway. And I was just gonna be a team player. Right, I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna interrupt it and I didn't wanna be too pushy. And I'm like, first of all, that's not a good look. No, you're Why a drag would you say queen. that? You are trying to tell the judges you have the most charisma, uniqueness, Durban talent. Right. So get in there. Yeah. So Asia wins. Yes, and I was like, no doubt. Yeah, that. I mean, I her performance, whatever. But like, it. it I didn't it, think she was bad. I no. just didn't think it was like a winning. Me either. But I guess but I don't no know. No one who else really, was. Yeah. So it was like you whatever. win by default. Yeah. Also, your runway was fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah. So like, yes. So I don't know. Yeah. So then. Mayhem. And Yuhua are in the bottom. And they have to lip sync to Celebrity Skin by Hole. And now I'm thinking about the snowman. Oh my god, Harry Hole. Harry Hole. <laughs> just gotta get, just gotta call Harry Hole. Oh my god. Oh boy. Oh boy. Ah, great Harry Hole. Immediately, Mayhem, I mean, she already had these oh, yes. crazy, really crazy yes. contacts, so that helped yes. because she went like full crazy goth, like, I'm gonna fucking cut somebody and like yeah. go crazy on yeah. you. Yeah. And then Yuha was like playing Guitar Hero, and it was like, well. No. It was cute, but Yuha was still just too bubbly for me. She never gave me like grunge. grunge. So Mayhem for me really was just giving me like, yeah. Everything. She was living this song and doing a fabulous job. She really was. And Yuha was doing okay. Yeah. But it was, it was cute. And yes. it was sort of the same? Yes, yeah. and then she like splits when there wasn't really a moment for it. No. And it was just kind of like, okay. I don't think this was her song or genre. No. Well, and then Mayhem starts oh, molting herself on stage, and I was like, I'm molting! Yes. <laughs> and it was like so good. And she obviously won. Like, it obviously was like, won. Yes, you. that was fabulous. Yes. And it was great. Well, I like that she's like, not only is she trying to win, she's trying to send a message to the bitches behind she's her, being oh, like, It's not going to be that easy to send mm -mm, me home. Mm -mm. The best part of the lip sync was, Have you ever felt so used to this? This? And she points out at you, and it was so funny. Shady. So shady. Love, Love it. it. <laughs> so, Untucked starts. Oh they all get back there. Monique pretty much immediately is just like. I just hope them bitches, like, when I watch this, they better not throw me under the bus because they will be getting a ungodly phone call. Oh, and then I'm gonna record that phone call and I'm gonna put it on YouTube. <laughs> okay. Let us talk about this elephant in the room. What, what? girl? And I thought this was actually really nice because she was pretty professional about it. It was like out of like a level of professionalism where it's right. like, we need to deal with this yeah. and like, let's act like adults. I would really like. If y'all hoes learn how to play well and work with each other. The vixen is basically like, look, if you come for me, I'm going to clap back. And like, I was upfront about that from the beginning. And so that's what it is. And I'm not going to change for you right. or anybody or this TV show or anything. I did question why your best drag wasn't your best drag. For once she and did. for all. Me and Monique traded hair. Aquaria is sort of like taking it in and going, well, you know, I was trying. She's not really admitting to be right. calling her out. She's like, well, I wasn't trying to really call you out. It's like right. what you were. So for you that. to say that my best drag wasn't my best drag, no, you that, poked no, the bear. No, 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 no. You that's poked not, the bear. I did not say that. No, your that's hair what, exactly what you said. You that's exactly what you said. But then Dusty gives. I mean, this was. Oh, oh this. And was, then in the makeup with. Oh the, my god. Oh, she's like, I mean, I wouldn't call you a friend. You've been very. Uh, dismissive and, and, and off-putting. She didn't say cunty. She did. She didn't say cunty. She said cunty. You've been like and standoffish to me. Really? 
Absolutely. Oh, and then she gives this like 12 minute speech that I is mean, nonsense. I mean, this sentence didn't make she's, any sense. Hearing you make side comments about other people, that may be jokes that didn't land. It was like half sentences and then she was wet. If I, you're in the mirror you know, by yourself. To stand at a mirror and to make a comment about yourself, someone else hearing that after all these other things, oh, talk to yourself to and then someone else could be offended by that. that. May take a certain offense that will set them off. And it was like, what? I really lost the plot on this one. 100%. What is the difference from Vixen making a snide comment and you making one? That, that's something I, I, And then Aquaria starts crying because everyone's sort of the focus is on her. And right. It, it seems like they're sort of attacking, you know, everyone's sort of sure. piling on. Sure. Um, but everyone's faces are like. It definitely felt like it came out of nowhere, the crying. Ish. Ish. It was like, oh, that like, seems like an extreme reaction. Yeah. And obviously, you know, they're stressed and whatever and emotions are high. And so I feel like it probably is pretty easy to break out into tears. Right. You say something, I say something, you start crying. You have created a narrative of I am an angry black woman who is scared of the little white I girl. I got where everyone was coming from yes. on this. I understand the vixen's concerns and point of view. That will always read to these as a race issue. I mean, Miss Cracker was also a very good kind of deliberator. I thought she was being a good mediator. Yeah. You are very smart. You are. And you know exactly where the scab is and where to put the salt. And you are wild. You will Push press every button until you find the right one. The, basically, the, the fight ends with the vixen basically saying, just leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> just don't talk <laughs> to me. Bottom line, yeah. leave me alone. Yeah. And then she starts crying again. I can't. <laughs> Tears. It's just, so, it's so gross. So I don't so like it. I don't. And the vixen is just like, I right. can't with this. This is gross. Oh my God. Like, she's just so over it. And I was just like, You're always on the defense. So you're just like, Bitch, I'm a 10 and I'm always at a 10 and I'm ready to attack. But no. see, I feel like that is going to hinder what is your blessing. They are, I don't think they're, no. I mean, the cracker kind of like laid the cracker. <laughs> This cracker lays it out, and it's like actually, do I, maybe I like the name of the cracker the better. Cracker. Next up, the cracker. I mean, it's, it's really good. Actually, it's, funny. like, it's funny, right? Okay, good. She lays it out and is like, "Aquaria, you're very this, right? And Nixon, you're very this." And Urgh. while you guys were gone, we had the fight of fights. Then the, the top, top and bottom, bottom queens, queens come in, and. Pretty quickly, it was like, well, Eureka is like, well, girl, wasn't someone thrown under the bus? And Monique is like, wasn't there like a few people thrown under the bus? Oh, I do believe someone was thrown under the bus, yeah. right? Would that yeah. happen? Yeah. Did that happen yeah. five minutes ago when I was on stage and clearly heard it? Yeah, it did happen, <laughs> Eureka. It did. It did. But so then this was weird though, because then Eureka is like defending mayhem. Uh, you do have a very strong and very, assertive very do, personality. But I'm, very, but I, I'm sorry. I'm I can't even get a word in it right ahead. now. I can only imagine being in your group. Sorry. Like too strongly, I felt. I felt so too. Well, because then when when Eureka says you are very assertive and especially being in a powerful spot like being captain, etc., I could see how I would be reserved. <laughs> <laughs> this was just like too much. It really was. And it, I wasn't really here for it. No, I was like, this is, this is. Well, and then May at certain, some point Mayhem and Cameron are talking about, oh, well, I'm, I'm, I would never play this game dirty. Oh, and yeah. I was like, dirty how? What the I fuck does that mean? Who are they talking about? I don't know. Dirty? I'm here to like do my thing. I'm not here to play dirty. Regardless of whether Mayhem thought Monique steamrolled her, that isn't playing dirty. Like, no. There was no time when I thought Monique was like, ha and then I'll I'm gonna sabotage right you. mayhem? That didn't, if anything, you're playing dirty by being like, Monique fucked me exactly. up. Exactly. It was just a lot. I it was. I was just like, this is a lot. I've never been here for, like, the throwing it under the bus drama oh, conversations. Oh, God, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, If I don't have to hear the term throw under the bus again, I'm fine with it. And then Yuha goes home, and you know I thought Yuha was really sweet. Yeah, and I, I liked I her. I think she said herself that she wasn't as strong as some of these girls, and that's fine. This was a frustrating episode yeah. because I thought there was a lot of really interesting things. I actually thought, I mean, there was a lot of drama, but I actually thought all of the sharing was really the most interesting yeah. part of the episode. Yeah. But I feel like I'm getting to know the queens. 
And I'm liking them even more, which is good. Yes. I'm, I'm here for it. I'm it, ready to see everybody do their best. Yes. I'm excited for more. I'm excited for next week. Yes. And then you know what's going to be after next week. Snatch Game? Yes! I mean, I'm assuming. I don't know. But Possibly. It, probably. It's usually the fifth episode. Yeah. So, cheers to next week. Uh, yes. Subscribe, share, bitch, ho! Patreon, ho! <laughs> um, buy our t-shirts, and just be fabulous and wonderful, and we'll see you next week.